Hey, this is Step Amit. Welcome to my exorcism.io series. In this video, I'll be working through the beer song exercise from the exorcism.io Ruby track. Now, this is, of course, um, the song 99 Bottles of Beer on the Wall. And we need to we need to print out um, the the verses, print out the lyrics. Uh, not you'll note, no, not every verse is the same uh, because when we get way down to the bottom here, um, when there is only one bottle left, um, it's not bottles anymore. It's a bottle of beer. We don't take one down. We take it down. And instead of having we won't have zero zero bottles left, it's no more bottles left. And then on the final verse, yes, it's the same. No more bottles and then the action is actually different. We don't take one down and pass it around. We go to the store and buy some more. And then we're back at 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Uh, okay, cool. Um, and then they've got some bonus things here that I might attempt. Remove as much duplication as you can. Optimize for readability, even if it means introducing duplication. Uh, if you've removed all the duplication, do you have a lot of conditionals? Try replacing the conditionals with polymorphism if it applies in this language and how readable is it? Yeah, I don't know. I'll see um, see where we get. Uh, I think this is gonna be a little bit of a longer one, um, but um, I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down. A copy in my rake file that has um, that allows me to run my tests by just typing rake. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start a new Tmux session. And then I'll take a look at the tests here and see what we've got. So we're gonna have um, a, a class called beer song inside of a beer underscore song dot rb file with the class level method recite. Uh, okay, it looks like it takes a starting number. So in this case, 99, and a number of verses to recite, I am I think is what that is. Yep, because here we're gonna start at 99 and we're gonna, and we're gonna recite two verses. Uh, there, we're gonna recite all the verses and that's it. Okay, that's what we need to do. Uh, let me open my test running pane and you may or may not have seen these videos before. I have, um, I have a mapping wired up so that when I hit, uh, in this case, F8, it's going to open up that bottom pane and run rake. And if the tests pass, it will close the pane again. I have a video where I explain my um, Vmux, my Vmux, my Tmux and Vim setup uh, that you can uh, you can go look at if you don't understand what you're seeing. And the first error here is the file doesn't exist. And of course it doesn't because I deleted it a second ago because I didn't want, I, don't, I like to start with an empty file and not the not the one that just has has the introductory comments, uh, beersong.rb. I'll open it up and I will swap the pane so that this is on the left. And I'll, uh, I'm just gonna let the test guide me pretty rigidly. So the next test here is, or the next failure is gonna be uh, that I need to actually initialize my class. So let's, let me do it. Beer song. And then finally, it'll complain that I don't have a method called recite on my class. So let me, let me do that. And then finally here, it's going to complain um, about the arity that it's, it, uh, we're being passed two arguments and I'm not accepting any yet. So uh, this is going to be the, um, let's call it the start number. Or let's just call it the number. The number of bottles and the number of verses. And then uh, to get this passing right now, I'm just going to go ahead and um, hard code a result here. Well, sort of. Let's just... We're, we're going to need to build up the verses and then return them. Return verses. For now, it's just going to be this string 
99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. And then I will just, I'll add take one down and pass it around. And let me split this out on another line. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. This isn't going to be quite right because there are uh, some new lines that need to be in, I need to introduce here. So I think this is going to fail. Yeah. Let's. Um, yep, because I just did it as a as a string. Let me introduce a new line character here. And so I got to change those single quotes to double quotes to get that to work. And then it looked like it had one at the end, right? Yes. We need one more at the end. So same thing. Um, I need a space right there. And we have, of course, 98 after we take one down and pass it around. There will be one fewer. All right. So let's continue on. Um, and so this is going to go from three bottles to two bottles. And this is going to make us actually um, introduce a little bit more functionality here. Because we're returning 99 and 98. I've hard coded those values. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> I am going to turn this into, I think, a formatted string. And then I'm going to return, I'm going to at the, at the um, hang on, oops. I'm going to pass it number and number. And actually these are digits. They're not strings. I don't want to, I don't want to convert it to a string there. So let's just see if that one works for the first verse. I should still have one failure. Uh, oh no, it, um, sorry. When you have more than one argument here, you have to actually pass it as an array. Um, okay. And then here I will simply, let's see, get, I only have one argument here for now. So I'm just going to pass it um, by itself. And this will be number um, number minus one, right? That's what I need. Um, I need to put this in parentheses so that it knows where to subtract it from. Okay. We're getting a little bit closer here. Um, and actually what I can do, I'm just going to subtract one here from number number minus uh, minus equals one. And then here I'm just going to I'm just going to give it a number. I'm going to decrement the number. OK, moving on to the next test test verse with two bottles. And this is going to give us another level of uh, custom behavior here because we're going to get to one here and that's going to change um, the pluralization on the word bottle. And so let me go ahead and run this test and it's of course going to fail because even though the numbers will be right, um, we're saying one bottles on the, on the last bit there. So let's go ahead and let's see. So what I need to do is introduce another concept here that I'm going to call a, I think, pluralized bottle. And I'm going to pass this number. And I need another one here.
and I'm going to need one here. So ignore all this duplication right now. I'm going to clean that up in a bit. Hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> of course that's going to fail because I haven't implemented pluralized bottle yet. And you know what? This just got a little bit more complicated here because I'm about to start proliferating class level methods and calling them. Uh, so, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and implement this pluralized bottle. But then I think I'm going to introduce I'm either I'm either going to um, create an instance of beer song that has some state or what I think I'm going to do here is build up an array of verse objects uh, that that will have the verse will have a number. Uh, and so it, each verse based on its number will know how to construct itself, uh, how to construct a string, how to two S itself. And then I can just join them together and get what I get what I need for my for my response here. So uh, let me just go ahead first here and start with pluralized bottle, which takes um, number. And so what I'm going to do is return. I'm going to I'm going to bail out early here. I'm going to return bottle. If number is equal to one. Otherwise, I'm going to return bottles. Now, I could do this as a ternary as well, but what I like about doing it this way is it indicates a little more clearly to me that this is the exceptional circumstance and this is the sort of the default behavior bottles. Uh, when I see this, it's like clear. That's clear to me. This clear to me that this is a guard clause. That something, it's the uh, the unusual case has happened. So I want to return this. Otherwise, I just want to do this. I want to do bottles. Uh, now another thing I could do is uh, create a hash for this, and maybe maybe I'll do this for this, or maybe maybe there'll be another instance of doing this. Uh, create a hash that has a default uh, value of bottles, and then simply add the specific. Uh, value under the key one for bottle. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll show that, um, and maybe I'll have a chance to do that. Okay, so this works. So let me go ahead and um, refactor this. Man, is it? Am I ready to do this? So I think what I want here is I think I want verses to be a new array, and then I'm going to return verses join. Um, And so what I need to do, okay, let's see. Um, versus for now, I'm going to add a new verse with number, with the current number. And then, okay, let's see. Create verse. It needs an adder reader for number. And then I can simp I can set number to that value as an instance variable. And then inside of 2s, I'm going to paste everything I had here. Um, and then I'm going to return. I'm, I'm just going to call it versus right now just to see if I can get this to pass. I need to move my pluralized bottle method down here and I will make this a private method. See if this works. Okay, something something wasn't happy. Uh, undefined method minus for nil class on line 22. Line 22 number. Oh, um, Hmm. So what I need to do here, I believe, is call next a number in this case, and and the same and same here. So what will that be? Next number will be number minus one. 
because you can't subtract equal a um, what's basically a method name uh, in that case. It's uh, with that adder reader. Uh, all right, so this doesn't make any sense. Let's um, change this to verse right now. And um, I'm going to keep going. You know, this this is going to make a little more sense as I go because I'll tell you what. Hmm. Here's what I want this to look like. This is the code that I wish I had. Forget lines 22, 20 through 23 for the moment. What I wish 2S was was uh, was simply an interpolated string here that had the uh, initial state, the action. So the initial state is 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer, or whatever our current number is. Then there's an action. Take one down and pass it around. And then there is a final state, 98 bottles of beer on the wall. So to do that, I'm going to move here. First, I'll just do this. I'll just rename these initial state. This will be final state and this will be action. Um, I don't know why I have verse here. Let me get rid of that. Um, and I'm going to move these each to their own method. I normally save this for like a later refactoring step, but this this seems complicated enough to me to warrant doing it right now. And then final state. And now I, I have a feeling that I'm not going to change this 2S method at all from here on out. I think this is exactly what it needs to be. My initial state, my action, and my final state. Um, and so you see that there's some duplication in here that we're going to need to extract somehow. We have a number in a pluralized string of beer. So items here, right, um, on the wall. Um, we have that duplicated here as well. We have uh, like items and we have a location and then we have items again. All right, let's um, let me see how far this gets me. So we're going to test it now with one bottle and this is where uh, things are going to get. This is kind of the next next interesting piece because we have pluralized string there. And then I think that'll just be taken care of. But we, we have this case now where we're going to have no more bottles. And of course, we're saying zero bottles. So instead of zero, we need to say no more. So let's see. So what I think I need to introduce here is the concept of a count string for a number. So where where is this falling down? Um, this is falling down in final state. So this is where I want to build it out, and then I'll move it as I need it. Um, count string. that takes a number. And what count string is going to do, very similar to pluralized bottle, it needs to return in this exceptional instance, if I can spell, it needs to return no more, no more, if number is equal to zero. 
Otherwise, it's going to return number 2s. See, is that going to work? Oh, man, that's not going to work because of a syntax error. Let's see. Where is this line? Says so the test line too. What's going on here? Beer song 40. Oh, count string. You need to close those parentheses there, buddy. Um, all right, wrong number of arguments given line 29 for count string given one expected zero. Oh. So count string actually needs to take this. I'm going to call it number of items instead of just using number. Uh, because we are passing it in. Invalid value for integer, no more. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, so so now for final state, that is not an integer, it's now a string. It's now a string. And so what's the problem? Oh, so one other difference here is instead of take it down, it's take one down. So this is now a change inside of our action based on based on the, the current number. Um, so this, so action actually needs to be, that doesn't need it, we don't need to be saving that. Um, I'm gonna use a formatted string here as well. Um, and it needs to take, let's call it um, action count, which will be um, zero, no, it will be one or it. And that uh, shouldn't be a zero. It needs to be percent. So action count. Again, we're going to return it if number is equal to zero. Otherwise, we're going to return one. Let's make that a string. Oh, sorry. If it's if it's one. All right, one more one more baby step. Let's keep going. So let's test the verse with zero bottles. Um, and this is going to fail for two reasons. One, because we're not capitalizing this here at the beginning, but we can take care of that and it's uh, pretty easily. But here, our action is actually different in this in this case. So let's just deal with these one at a time. The first error is invalid value for integer, no more. So this is the um, same problem here. This is a string uh, for count string number and um, I guess this needs to also be count string number, which means that that um, that this D needs to be an S. So this should get us to our next error. No more bottles. Let's see here. No more bottles of beer on the wall. No more bottles of beer. So the problem with that line is we're not uh, capitalizing that first no. And then the action is completely different. And instead of going to 99, uh, back to 99, we get we go to negative one. That's bad, having having negative one bottles of beer on the wall. Um, so I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back on what I said here and change this, my 2S method up here. I think that is where I wanna capitalize that. I just wanna capitalize whatever has been passed back to me. So let's see. That should take care of the first. Yeah, so see the first line matches now. 
So now the second line doesn't match and it's for two reasons. One, the action is completely different and the next number is different too. So, so next number actually has a set a different case now. And let me, let me handle this. Um, and I'm simply going to do, let's see, am I going to do this? Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, I'm going to return 99 if number is equal to zero. Otherwise, it's going to be number minus one. So that should fix the second half of that. Well, and it didn't. Sorry, if number is zero, keep doing that. OK, so now it's just it's just the first part that the action is completely different in this case. Uh, there are two actions. Um, what it's go to the store and buy some more or it's take it down or one down and pass it around. And so we can I can start by doing the same thing. Let me just try that. Um, go to the store and buy some more comma. If number is equal to zero. Otherwise, we'll return this. Uh, OK, let's keep going. Test the first two verses. This is going to fail. Uh, I think we have each verse now now um, working properly, but this is going to fail because we're not doing multiple, not doing multiple verses. Let me just run this. And so let's see. Yep, we're the first verse is fine, but we're not uh, printing out a second verse. So I'm going to have to come back up here to the top. You see. You see, the reason is that um, we're ignoring number of verses here and just adding one verse to our array. So we need to do something like this number of verses times. We need to to do this and, and we need hmm, number to be equal to ah okay let's see i want to just be able to grab next number from here um which right now is a private method in here i'm going to pull it up to be a public method so that i can call it and instead of just shoving this straight in here I'm going to save it. Actually, I can just do it all on one line here versus. And then. Number set number equal to verse next number. And I think that will work. OK, what didn't work there? Ninety nine bottles of beer on the wall, nine bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around ninety eight. Uh, there needs to be an extra uh, new line in between each verse. So um, I'll just join them together here with that. We don't need that. <laughs> I added that semicolon there because I've since January, I've been um, it's it's mid April now. And since January, I've been uh, using Java day to day on the job. Um, and so my, my brain is kind of getting stuck. I want to come back to do these Ruby exercises. Um, all right. Okay. So that worked. Let's try the last three verses and this should just work. All right. And test all the verses. This is going to work. Oh, amazing. That's it. So we have all our pieces and it works here. So let me see if there's any refactoring I want to do. Uh, OK, let's look at the fir first here, this entry point, the recite class level method. Got a number and a number of verses. Um, 
I mean, I could call it number of items, number of bottles. It's a little more explicit. So I take my number of bottles and my number of verses and then initialize a verses array. And the number of verses times I grab and uh, create a new verse with the number of bottles. I set it to a local variable and I stick it into my array. And then I set number of bottles to the next number that I asked that verse uh, object for. And then I join those verses together with uh, a new line. And so let's see here. Uh, whoops. So let me, I'm just going to, I'm going to do the same thing here too. Um, uh, yes, 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 no, yes, yes, yes. Number of items, next number, next number. Um, let's see, did I screw anything up there? No, I didn't. Uh, okay, so. All right, so number of verses is a good change. Return 99 if number of verses equals zero. Um, otherwise, return number of verses minus one. I think this is fine. I mean, we, we could also use a ternary here. Um, either way is fine. 2s, um, I think, is OK. Action. So I, I think I want to do what I was saying before about um, about building up a hash. If I had a hash that had a default value of uh, take it down and pass it around, then this could be, uh, let's see, action strings. Number of verses. Um, percent action count because you, you can pass, you can use this as a formatted string. And even though there are no places for, um, a parameter to go, you can still pass it the parameter and it'll be okay. It won't complain about that. So if I had this, um, and gave it action count, I think it would be good. So I think it would be fine. So the way the way you would do this is, um, I, I can't just I can't just initialize this with a hash literal, literal um, which is what I would normally normally want to do, right? I would normally want you know uh, one as you know what whatever i can't do that because i i don't want to i don't want to enter every value from zero to 99. uh so instead what i need to do is initialize this to a hash dot new and give it a default value um which is going to be take percent s down and pass it around comma space and then what I can do is set action because I have one one case that doesn't fit that. Action strings zero. And this is going to be go to the store. Buy some more comma space. All right. Um, it's a little weird. But it but it works. And it cleans this up, right? It takes some logic out of here 
and turns this into a hash lookup. Um, let's see. There, there might be, maybe there's another place where, where we could do this. I don't know. Uh, so action counts. It versus one. We could do the same thing here. I don't know. Let's just see what this looks like. What I call it. Action counts. And it would be a hash dot new. That would default to one. And then we would add. Uh, one here is the is the value that we want to look up. This would be it. And this will be the same thing. Action counts number of verses. Hmm. What I don't like about this is it introduces one more level of redirection. Uh, what I do like about it is it takes the bare string and moves it out of the method and up here into a constant um, so that I know what these are. These are my action strings and then these are my action counts um, and action strings. Um, action patterns. Maybe is more descriptive of what these are. because these are formatted strings, action patterns. Yeah, I like that better. That's that's more descriptive to me. Action counts, um, count string, no more. OK, versus that. Cool. Um, so final state. So here, um, when I get down here, I see I've got some duplication. Um, but first, I think I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to def I'm going to set defaults in these guys. So number of strings, I think is going to. I mean. Um, count string. Number of items, I'm going to I'm going to default that to number of. Bottles. Wait a freaking minute here. All right, I just realized that I, I named this this guy wrong. Um, I called this number of verses. But of course, it's number of bottles. Um, so what I need to do is just is just is come in here and change that. I need to change that to number of bottles. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, counts. Yeah, th these actually should all be. This doesn't even this class doesn't even know the, about number of verses. But what I want to do is uh, getting back to the point. I want to default count string here to take number of bottles. And then um, only final state needs to pass next number. Uh, count string, I don't need to pass anything. Or sorry, on initial state, I don't need to pass anything because that's just the default. And then actually, you know what? I can do the same thing for pluralized bottle because uh, pl by default, pluralized bottle can be number of bottles. And let's just call this maybe, um, oh man, count, count. Just just to give it a different name there. We don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want it to stomp on it or be confusing. That simplifies that a little bit, but uh, let's see what to do about this, this duplication here. Um, 
So this is interesting because this there's a there's a level of duplication here at this level. But there's a smaller level of duplication um, just with the number of bottles of beer. Um, hmm. And so really, I might want to split each of these two strings into two formatted strings. And then combine them here so that, let's see, initial state would be... Um, Let's see, if I split those up into different methods that handled that, this might be um, items, which would be that full thing, 99 bottles of beer, space, location. Just like that. And, and I could split. So this would be, the first part would be items and then location. And oh, actually, you know, that I was thinking about my final state here. I would need comma space and then items again, wouldn't I? Let me, let me try that real quick. Def items would be, first I'll just put it here. I'm going to split it up. Hang on. Location, it would be this part, bottles of beer, um, with just count string. No, uh, count string and pluralized bottle. And then location uh, is just going to be the string on the wall. And so if I do that, then final state becomes, simplifies to items. And, oh, interesting. Location. But items is actually going to be next number. So items will need to accept a number and default that to a number of bottles. Is that right? Is that going to work? Oh, you know what? Oh, I need to pass that on down here, number, and pass it to pluralize bottle. All right, who, who's falling down here? Go to the store and buy some more 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Final state needs a period and a new line. All right. Um, hmm. so, so now count string and pluralized bottle don't actually need a default because I'm, I'm explicitly passing it in everywhere I call it. Uh, where's count string here? Okay. Um, all right, so what else here? You know, I've got these strings here. I could um, I could pull these out into let's see item pattern items pattern. Let me create that here. Items pattern. Whoops. And then um, for the other one location string
Um, okay, let me, let me give this a final read through. Um, I think recite is good. We give it number of bottles, number of verses, initialize our array of verses. And then number of verses times, we, we initialize a new verse with the number of bottles and stick that in our array. And then we, uh, we turn number of bottles into verse dot next number. We set it to that and then, you know, and either, either enter our next, either enter our next, uh, time iteration through this array, or we drop out the bottom and then join our verses together with a new line. So, our verse, we initialize the number of bottles. And then the next thing that's going to happen to it is, well, next number. Um, so let's look at that real quick. Next number will return 99 if number of bottles is zero. Otherwise, it's going to it's going to decrement number of bottles. And then the next thing we do is we join them together with a new line, which we'll call 2s on the verses. So that's here to s this is an interpolated string taking our initial state and capitalizing it then the action then the final state all right so what is the initial state the initial state is items space location comma space items period new line um, all right so items is it takes an takes an optional number, which defaults to number of bottles. It takes our items pattern and passes it a count string and pluralized bottle uh, with those numbers. So that is string string of beer, um, which would be, let's see, count string is either no more or the number uh, to string. So it's 99 or no more. And then pluralize bottle, if, if count is one, returns bottle, otherwise it returns bottles. Uh, so in this, so this would be, um, again, 99 bottles, one bottle, no more bottles. Uh, okay, so the next item in 2S is the action. So the action takes the action patterns uh, hash and looks up number of bottles and gives it action count, which again is looked up in a different hash. Uh, so let's go look at those at those guys. I'm going to start with action counts because it's the it's, it's the lowest level one. OK, so this is a hash. It's it defaults to one. Um, if it is exactly one, it will return the word it. Uh, so every other case, it will return the word one and then action patterns. Uh, if there are zero left, so it'll call action pattern zero. It's go to the store and buy some more. Otherwise, take 99, 98 or no, take one. Sorry, take one down and pass it around or take it down and pass it around. Okay. <laughs> and then final state is the items with next number and location. Ah. You know, it it works. Um I'm not sure that this is the most like explicit to me. This is a situation where, you know, the the sort of the rules of maintainable code tell us that you that it's a code smell to have a string just right down here in a method and that looking it up this this way might be a better way. But I, I think. Oh, look, see, I've got no more here as well as a bare string, man, oh, man, I don't know. This has gone on super long. I think this is OK. It's probably not the best refactoring I've done, but um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and submit it. I'm super tired today, so that that's what I'm going to do. All right. Um, 
man, if you, uh, you've got a better approach there, uh, please leave it in the comments. Thanks for uh, watching this video. Um, be sure to check out my refactoring course, which is now open uh, to students. There's a link down below and uh, right up here, there should be a clickable little button uh, to go check out my refactoring, my premium refactoring course. And um, all right, I will see you in the next video.